chapters I'm turning pages Glory to glory From faith to faith I'm moving on I'm moving on I'm moving on I'm getting older This is a nice groove Woo! <laughs> So if you know this, Jonathan has his lips puckered just a little bit. I'm closing chapters. I'm turning pages. There's a little jog extension too. Just a little bit. I'm turning pages. And I feel like that maneuvering of articulation fits the vibe of the song. It's kind of like small, you know, ding, 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 ding. it kind of fits the vibe of what's going on in this moment of the song. Very like acoustic, intimate, little pop, little gospel, little, you know, little groove. So I'll keep it straight. It hurts to let go and it hurts more to stay on. It hurts to let go and that larynx dropped. It hurts to let go, but it wasn't pushed. It was still very small. It hurts to let go and and now he's smiling a little bit more right here. It hurts to stay moving on. You know, I like that. I'm The word compare, that stuck out. Can't compare to, not can't compare to. Can't compare to, it was it can't compare to. No, the R was gone, can't compare. It fits the groove, y'all, I'm telling y'all, it's good, I like this song. And I am forgetting what's behind me. See, I have finally decided. I also like hearing him in this context, a little more beefier, a little more beltier, like just a little more pushing a little bit. I like this. It gives a different color to me, to his voice than what I've heard before. Not that I'd never knew he couldn't do this. I've always known he could do this, but just to hear it like this, it's just nice to hear even more layers, even more aggression in his voice, more bite, you know? And there's still a little forwardness and little twang brightness. He has a very bright voice. Many higher voices have brighter timbres, brighter textures, you know? We tend to have brightness to our voice because it helps us to get high easier. His voice isn't super heavy, it has a lighter texture, more forward placement. And you can hear, there's not a lot of weight or like a lot of heaviness to his voice. It's very light, very forward. I'll be moving on. I'm a more rounder approach than Jonathan does. I feel like Jonathan started out round but kind of got brighter. He kind of stays here. His jaw's a little more extended too. Uh, da, da, da. I'm moving on. Hey. Uh, and he has a lot of kind of more mid-tongue stuff going on. He doesn't really do a lot of bright forward stuff. His tongue kind of sits more in that mid part, not necessarily high, but more so mid when he sings. Oh, oh yes I am. their torsos are engaged like they're sitting on stools but you can tell their torsos are straight up they're singing they're using them abs to sing using them breathing muscles even though their arms doing stuff like this and kind of going with the music to me that's a sign of using their body for support i see a lot of people when they sing they do stuff like this with their arms and kind of clench fists i do the same thing but i'm really engaging my body to help support what's going on vocally for me so i think they're doing that a lot when they're singing even in their stools you know yeah. I know my the 
grit that Molly Music has. He has a little more grit than Jonathan does. There's a little more thickness and grit to his voice, a little more compression. And I don't mean compression isn't a bad thing. He's hurting himself. I don't mean that at all. I mean, there's just a little more thickness happening in his voice, a little more compression and thickness. I bet you the false vocal cords are kind of coming in just a little bit more for Molly than Jonathan, you know? But that kind of gives that grit, that, 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 rawness that we love Molly Muse to have, you know? Kind of gives that rawness that we all know him to have, too. And I am Yeah, moving on. I'm gonna be yeah. He puckered those lips. I'm gonna be yeah. Kind of gave that gathered sound with the pucket of the lips. Kind of gave that warmer, deeper sound. I'm gonna be yeah, moving. Whatever the lick was, but you hear what I'm saying. <laughs> Ahead and I'm just in this body. Never will my love be spotted. I pride myself on bringing light to the party. Holy Ghost, rectify the mind. I get naughty. What made me want to do this video was this part right here in particular, amongst everything else that they're doing so well. But this part in particular caught my eye because one day I was talking to a client. I talked about ad libbing. They want to know how to ad lib and how to drive songs. It's not just about what to say. It's about how to say it. It's about how to pace it, how to put it in the context of the rhythm, of the chordal structures of the music. It's not just about, I gotta find stuff to say. It's like, how can I make this make sense grammatically, musically, syntax? Just don't, in, in those contexts, not just, I gotta find stuff to say, how can I make it make sense? Because to me, the point of like a drive or a vamp or a repeated part is to drive the point of the song home. So a lot of times during the drive, you have the lead singer, they're really saying different things to really drive the point of the song home. So like in the context of gospel, I tell my clients a lot of times, if you need to find something to say, number one, find some scriptures that correlate with the song. Because in terms of the word gospel, outside of the context of gospel music, it's the good news. The birth, the death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. So what scriptures can I use to correlate and kind of give the point of the song its meaning, right? Number two, maybe find some hymns that help, you know? What hymns kind of drive home the point of the song? I use hymns a lot when I ad-lib. Those who know me know I use a lot of hymns, I use a lot of scriptures. And here's the thing, I premeditate on my ad-libs. <laughs> I don't sit there and try to conjure it up the day of. I will sit at home, write stuff out, practice it. So then I have a blueprint, a foundation. So then if something else comes to mind, the spirit gives me something else, I can go there, but I still have a script, if you will. There's nothing wrong with having a script when you ad lib. I'm gonna say it again. There's nothing wrong with having a script when you ad lib. A lot of your favorite artists, when they travel from different cities, they do the same thing. They do. They do the same thing or like 80%, 90% the same thing. Of course, they let the moment happen and sometimes different things happen depending on the room, the environment, or whatever's going on. But generally, by 85% of the time, they're gonna say the same thing. That's why you go to those concerts and you say, oh, they're saying my favorite part because they're doing exactly what you want them to do or exactly what the recording is or exactly what they normally do in that part of the song. So pertaining to this, I like how Molly has paced this ad-lib and what he's saying here. Another thing to think about with ad-lib, and let me go back to that point, is personal testimony, your personal connection. How can I make this song personally connect to me? What has happened in my life? What stories can I talk about that can correlate, you know, with what's being said in the song? Now, after you have those points, you kind of have your thought, your brainstorm, how can I make it fit musically, tempo-wise, contextually, syntax and grammar, how can I make sure it makes sense? Some people like their stuff to rhyme. That's hard to do sometimes. I mean, you can make it happen, you know, but a lot of times you want to place words within the tempo, within the body of the work of music, right? And so I like how he really paces. It's kind of like a little bit behind the beat, but it's still on the beat. He's taking the liberty of going behind the beat. You know, so he's kind of behind the beat a little bit, but it's really fitting the groove. So he's fitting the groove of the song while still placing the words in a way that you can understand them. That's the main thing I'm trying to get to. You have to be able to understand what you're saying, because if I'm ad-libbing to my face, but I have too many words within the free parts, within the parts I'm supposed to ad-lib in, 
I'm losing a meeting and people can't understand what I'm saying. So if I can slow it down and break it down to where it makes sense musically, I can make it work. So think about that when you ad lib. Think about how to place things, not just what to say, but how to place it musically, tempo wise. Make sure you're singing the pitches that work in the chord of the structure of the music too, okay? So all that can go into ad libbing. I like how he does what he does here. He's making the ad libs what he's saying works. So we can understand it, number one. Number two, it works in the context of the music, you know? It's powder, I'm a dry land. Without your power, I'm a nightmare. Uh, it's nothing but trouble singing. Can't have two minds on the down man. My brother call me out the front man. Tell me we're moving this in God's name. in this little part right here a little bit kind of the makings of scatting a little bit a little bit a little bit and i like how jonathan switched that head voice right there you know they're not pushing they're not over singing they're just kind of having fun and grooving you know this song equates that kind of singing you know it kind of necessitates you know this kind of singing that's what i'm talking about that body that big voice that jonathan has been using lately see how he kind of got in to his body and uh, he really hunkered down, anchored down, and really went there, got more aggressive. Did you hear that go that he just did? Go! And he kind of went to the head voice towards the end of that word go on that ascending run right there. And I like this groove, this change of the groove right here. Go! Tell it up. This is my kind of stuff, okay? I can sing this to my face turn blue. This is stuff I like. <laughs> Did you see the word Jesus? That Jesus, instead of that Jesus. Mm -mm. That Jesus. I'm talking about that pucker of the lips that I talked about him doing before. That's what I'm talking about right there. If you enjoyed this analysis and enjoyed this video, click subscribe down below, then click the alert button next to it so you know when the next video is posted. And as I always, always, always say, be vocally bold, creative, and aware, but most of all, be vocally you. All right, y'all, have a wonderful Christmas.